How's everybody doing? Uh, yeah, right around. Keep rolling. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. You enjoy that. Keep doing it, baby. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Hi, how's everybody doing today? Um, my name is Jason Hall, and as you heard, I am the co-founder of Detroit Bike City and Slow Roll Detroit. Um, there are a couple very important projects in my life, the most important things going on in my life and my partner's lives right now, but I think you should hear a little bit of background of how we got to where we got to this point, because it's really one of the most unconventional ways one person can probably end up in business. Um, in 2001, I graduated from uh, Spex Howard School of Media Arts, and I decided that I, I wanted to work in television my whole life. I didn't know what part of television, but I, as a kid growing up, I used to watch Webster all the time. Anybody watch, watch Webster? You know, I used to be want, I wanted to be Webster. I'm not lying. I'm not playing. So I used to watch Webster, and I decided I wanted to work in television. So uh, graduating, I got extremely lucky and got to get a job at Channel 4 right in town. Whereas most people get out of school, they have to go work in some crazy town and earn their stripes. I got a job right in my hometown. I kind of had to earn my stripes a little bit. Oddly enough, my job wasn't working in news. It was doing what we used to call MeTV. Anybody remember MeTV? Probably not, probably before people's generations. That's all right, that's okay. Uh, MeTV used to be, we had several kiosks set up all over the metro area, and we would ask you a question, and you could go there and hit record, and record yourself answering the question, okay? I got out of school, I thought this was the best job in the world because I got to drive all over by myself and hang out. But then my other job was to clean the booths, bring the tapes home, watch the tapes, edit the footage, okay? And I'm just gonna keep it short. A lot of our booths were not in the most uh, intellectual of places. Some of them might have been in bars that usually I got my response after midnight. And let me just tell you now, it was never verbal, the response I got. So I did that for about six months, and they canceled me TV. Surprise. Canceled me TV. And I was devastated. And my boss came to me and he said, Jason, you're one of the hardest working people I've ever had, so I'd like to offer you a job learning how to direct the news. Wow. Okay. If anybody knows television, that's huge. So I took the job full force. And what I learned in school is that you have to dive into the job and be the job, okay? They say in television, if you're gonna advance, you have to give everything to it, so I did. For nine years, I gave them everything. I worked one month, 18 days straight. I worked a couple of days, almost 24 hours, trying to prove my worth to this company. Well, nine years later, I got laid off. The unimaginable happened. I, I thought I'd worked so hard my whole life and proved myself that they couldn't get rid of me. Well, they got rid of me. I was devastated and I sort of fell into like a little bit of a depression, okay? But at that time, due to the fact that I was laid off, I had a little bit of extra time on my hands. So I started hanging out with some friends that I hadn't seen in a long time and I reconnected with a friend, Kelly Cavanaugh. I don't know if you guys know Kelly Cavanaugh from the Wheelhouse Detroit. Um, very instrumental in getting me back on a bicycle. And she used to talk to me about all this fun they had and how crazy it was. And I was just like, it's riding a bike, man, whatever, you know? And so I started riding a bike that a friend loaned me to go from bar to bar. You know, that's how you do it in Detroit. You don't want to drive a car, you get on, you ride your bike. Not the safest either, but. So we ride our bike and I started loving just what I was doing and who I was hanging out with. And I started to notice a change in my life because all the like, things that I was going through where I was becoming disillusioned with Detroit, love started to come back to the city because I got out of my car. I didn't realize what it was until I hadn't driven my car for like a month. And everybody's like, well, my friends aren't happy to hear that because I don't even know what a gas price is. But I hadn't driven my car in a month and I, I started becoming happier and being more productive, but in other avenues. Like I thought I would work in TV forever, but I started thinking more creatively. How can I maybe edit footage on my own? What can I do to do things on, for me? Well, in that summer of riding bikes, I also met a very, a very good friend of mine, a very instrumental person, Mr. Mike McCool. And I know you're thinking to yourself, McCool, right? You're like, yeah, right, that's his name, McCool. He gave himself that name, I swear that's really his name. So Mike and I started hanging out. And we started riding bikes and we started sharing ideas about what we felt we wanted to do for the city and what we thought we could do for the city. Well, at the same time, we kind of were doing some other things, drinking a lot of red wine, 
playing a lot of video games, okay? So Mike looks at me one day after a summer of playing video games and uh, riding bikes. Actually, I looked at Mike, and I said, Mike, is it pathetic that this whole summer you or I haven't like hung out with anybody, really. All we've done is rode bikes and played video games. Mike paused and he looked at me and he said, bikes and murder, man. That's what we do. Call of Duty, baby, we, we kill zombies. And so I'm like, that's crazy, right? You know, I'm like, bikes and murder. That sounds so catchy to me because I'm, you know, that's where my mind is, okay? And once again, the murder is connected to the killing of zombies in a video game. First, let me clarify. So I said, um, that sounds so catchy. Let's make a t-shirt. So we made a t-shirt for our friends and we decided that we'd give it out. We gave it out and we got our share of feedback up and down. My mom was definitely down on the bikes and murder. So in that time, we decided to do things and start doing different projects. Well, we, the winter came and we were thinking, how do we keep people connected to what we're doing through the winter? So we started doing anything that we could do that was a bike event that would bring people in that were connected to us. So the first thing we did was a show at the Majestic Theater. We did a custom bike show. And the beauty of this is, is we didn't call Schwinn or we didn't call a bunch of bike companies. We literally called people we knew. That's the beauty of Detroit for us. So our first show we did, we didn't have any money. None. Zero. And Mike said, how are we gonna do a show with no money? And I said, well, the first thing we'll do is we'll do it for charity because that's what we wanna do anyway. And if we make any money, we can give it away. And then if anybody wants to get paid, we can just say, hey, we did it for charity. So we did it and it went over. And a friend of ours came to us and he said, you guys, you guys have this crazy energy. I feel like you guys should do something bigger. He's like, you know, there's an auto show in Detroit. Why don't you guys think about doing a bike show? Okay, you know, we're, we're, we're free thinkers. We went home, drank some more red wine, talked about it. We decided we would invest in it and we started looking at venues. But at the same time, Mike was working at Kobo for the auto show. And we were using like all these venues and we said, well, one day, hopefully we can end up at Kobo in front of everybody and make Detroit a, mo you know, a motorless city. Let's replace everything that's going away with two wheels and make it this great big place for the North American bike show. Well, we had these grandiose ideas, and Mike one day, he's working, and he runs into somebody at work at Kobo. Tells the story, and they're like, nah, okay. We go about our business, two weeks later we get a call from Kobo. Kobo's interested in doing the show. Keep in mind, we don't have any money. No money. We have all these ideas, and lots of red wine, but no money. So we decide, let's, let's, let's try to make this happen. There was no doubt in my mind that it couldn't happen, nor anybody on the team. We said, let's go forward. I said, I'm, I, let's do it. First year we had 10 people, second year we had about 20 for the first ride. A couple rides later, 50. A couple rides later, 130. So we ended our season on a high. We thought that nothing can be better than this. We have 130, that's all the bike riders in Detroit. That's what we thought at that time. We were like, we have 130, that's everybody who rides a bike. We're good to go. So we go again and we go back to the drawing board and we start on the show for the next year. We end up going from 60,000 square feet to 100,000 square feet and moving upstairs, doubling vendors and doubling sponsors. Uh, a lot of this we thought was due to all the hard work that we did on Bike City, but a lot of it was residual from slow roll. So we started to notice that. So then we started slow roll this year, in our third year, and we have 300 people. Second week we have 600 people. Fourth week we got 800. We have been at a steady average of 1,500 people every Monday for the entire summer. We are currently Michigan's largest weekly bike ride. We are currently going for, the, we're going for Denver, who's number one. We're working hard. And all of this came out of community. Once again, we didn't have any money. We had lots of red wine, lots of video gaming, no money. But the community got behind us. Everything that we've done has been an idea that's been fed to us by somebody in this audience or someone at home on how we can make the infrastructure better. We started out, we just wanted to ride bikes with our friends. But now we're talking about 
the largest bike ride. We have another project called the Air Pump Project, where we're trying to put air pumps in different places all over the city so you can access those things from your phone if you get a flat or anything. It's all about the progression of this and what you guys and everybody has done for us. Detroit has been like the strongest force in my life. I've been here my whole life and I got a minute left, so I'm trying to finish it up. I've been here my whole life. I will never leave. Every time I think about Detroit, my dreams are living here, not somewhere else. So we're going to keep working hard. Um, we're on our third year of our show. We have a lovely family at Kobo that we refer to all the time. We refer to all of you all the time. We do lots of stuff for charities, and that is what makes us do what we do. So I hope I got a little bit out there about Slow Roll um, and really the energy behind it. And I want, I mean, I mean, a ton of you I've met, I tried to hand you a flyer and you were like, oh, I've already been there. So I'm assuming all of you have already been there. If you're not, come out this Monday. Um, and I'd like to thank you for your time. I'd like to thank Mike. And I'd like to take this second to uh, dedicate this to a friend of mine who died last Saturday. Uh, he being hit by a car. So please be safe, wear your helmets, uh, and take care of yourselves, everybody. Thank you. Without him, I wouldn't be anything. <laughs> As we were putting together TEDx this year, uh, Jason was one of the, one of the first. Uh, folks that came to mind is well this is kind of that energy and that idea that, that we want to amplify and spread so you know as the old famous quote goes the the way to experience a city is on two wheels that's correct you know when you when we hit the accelerator and just go down those hills we don't really feel them. but when you're pedaling you feel every hill and Detroit's not that flat um, so we have slow roll every Monday at well, what we, yeah, we, we, what we do is we actually move from a different restaurant bar every week and we usually try to ask that they not be open because we want them to see the full force of Slow Roll. And especially when you show up with 1,500 people at somebody's door, it's kind of a shock. But what's cool is we're boosting the economy of all of these restaurants through what we started. Not, that was never the plan, but when you get into it and you know what you want to do, it just showed itself. So we've worked with 23 bars and restaurants this year, and I can't even tell you how much money they've made. Uh, I can tell you how much money we've made, but I can't tell you how much money they've made, but it's been great, so. So, so Slow Roll happens every Monday night. There's a lot of other great rides in the city. Every Thursday night, one of Detroit's most beautiful neighborhoods on display. Palmer Park. Park. You wanna talk about Palmer? Palmer Park, uh, another great... <laughs> Mike is like playing right, with right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Homer Park Ride, another great ride started by a good friend of ours, Henry Ford II. Uh, go down there and check it out. It's a great historic neighborhood. You know, we started this ride, people used to joke with me that I used to do the real estate ride because I used to take all my friends around and be like, okay, this house is for sale and you should check that one out. And I used to be this champion, you know, moving back to Detroit. That's what, really what this was about at the beginning was bring people to Detroit, show them that you can live here. There are neighborhoods that we can take back and bring that community back. So it started out as a joke, but then it just became reality that part of the ride is our responsibility to show Detroit off in a positive light, no matter what that neighborhood may be. So we go to every place, but definitely check out Palmer Park, a great historic neighborhood. And then you want to mention real quick, Crit? Critical Mass? Yeah. Well, Critical Mass is on the last Friday of every month. I do want to mention real quick, next Monday's ride is at TV Bar <laughs> down Grand River. I uh, expect to see a lot of you guys come out and ride with us. And uh, just to touch back on what he said real quick, the impact is real. We have had people move to Detroit because of our bike ride. It happens every week. Someone's saying, hey, I'm moving to Detroit because you guys showed us a neighborhood that we didn't know existed or we didn't know that it was possible to live in Detroit like this and experience the city on such a real level. And so our impact is real. That's it. Detroit Bike City.
Thank you. Mike and I will be at the after party.